Good evening. Our readings for this evening, Psalms number 85 and 86, Old Testament from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 6, starting at verse 1, and from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 to 59. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You who by night stand in the house of our God, lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. So let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, in the, the glory of your name. So, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we turn to Psalm 85. O Lord, you were gracious to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sin. You put aside all your wrath and turned away from your fierce indignation. Return to us again, O God our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Will you be displeased with us for ever? Will you stretch out your wrath from one generation to another? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord God will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful ones whose hearts are turned to him. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him and his Glory shall dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall flourish out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will also give us all that is good. And our land shall yield its plenty. For righteousness shall go before him and tread the path before his feet. Psalm 86. Incline your ear to me, O God, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. My God, save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I call to you all the day long. O make the soul of your servant, make glad the soul of your servant, for I put my hope in you, O Lord. For you, Lord, are good and forgiving of great continuing kindness to all who call upon you. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give heed to, my, to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you will surely answer. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any deeds like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you. O Lord, they shall glorify your name, for you are great and do marvellous things, and you alone are God. Show me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Let my heart delight to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your abiding love toward me, and you have delivered my life from the lowest depths of the grave. Insolent men, O God, have risen against me. A band of ruthless men seek my life. They have not set God before their eyes. <coughs> but you, Lord, are a God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, full of goodness and truth. Turn to me and be merciful. Give your strength to your servant and save yet the son of your handmaid. Show me some token of your goodness that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, are my helper and my comforter. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Now the first scripture reading is from the book of the Nehemiah, starting at chapter 6, verse 1. Now when it was reported to Sanballat and Tobiah, and to Geshem the Arab, and to the rest of our enemies, that I had built the wall and that there was no gap left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates. Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they intended to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it to come down to you? They sent for me four times in this way, and I answered in the, them in the same manner. In the same way, Sanballat, for the fifth time, sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It's reported among the nations, and Geshem also says it, <coughs> that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That is why you are building the wall, and according to this report you wish to become their king. You have also set up prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem concerning you. There is a king in Judah, and now it will be reported to the king according to these words. So come therefore, let us confer together. Then I sent to him, saying, no such things as you say have been done. You are inventing them out of your own mind. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking their hands will drop from the work and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. One day when I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Delia, son of Methabethel, <coughs> who was confined to his house, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, tonight they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Would a man like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived and saw that God had not sent him at all. But he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He was hired for this purpose, to intimidate me and make me sin by acting in this way, so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, O oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Nadiah and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So the wall was finished, on the 25th day of the month of Elu, in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, 
The nations around were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that the work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Moreover, in those days the nobles of, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and Tobiah's letters came to them. For many in Judah were bound by oath to him, because he was the son-in-law of Sekaniah, <coughs> son of Ara, and his son, Jehohanan, had married the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechiah. Also, they spoke of his good deeds in my presence, and reported my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. Hear the word of the Lord. So we read together the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, oh, excuse me. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our forebears, to Abram and his children forever. Glory to God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, beginning at verse 49. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it's completed. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And why do you not judge yourselves judge and why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? Thus, when you go with your accuser before a magistrate, on the way make an effort to settle the case, or you may be dragged before the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the officer, and the officer will throw you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you've paid the very last penny. So we say the song of Simeon. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, <coughs> creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Today's readings focus on opposition. Nehemiah, an important servant in the Persian king's court, was upset about what he had heard of the situation in Jerusalem. He had been praying about it for some time when the king asked him, what was troubling him. After a quick prayer, he told the king why he was upset, and the king gave him leave to go and sort it out. When he arrived in Jerusalem, he told no one why he was there before he had had a look at the state of the wall. Then he set to, allocating each of the volunteer wall builders a portion close to their own homes. Asan Balat and his colleagues were Samaritans and they tried very hard to dissuade Nehemiah from completing the wall. They put a lot of pressure on him, to the point eventually of threatening to kill him, but he did not deviate from his, appointing task, his appointed task, completing it in short order. In the New Testament reading, we heard Jesus saying that he had come not to bring peace to the earth, but rather division. One of Jesus' ways of teaching was by contrasts. But in this case, this was more of a prophecy that those who follow Jesus would meet opposition. But what is behind this opposition? Why are people so opposed to the work of God? A number of the Old Testament prophets had serious opposition. Elijah, for instance, stood alone against the prophets of Baal. Jeremiah stood alone against a number of false prophets claiming to be from God. But a more important question is what gave the prophets the confidence to face the opposition they met? Without exception, these were men and women who knew God, and Jesus is, of course, God. But note, in the Old Testament, the opposition came from people remote from the prophets. Jesus brings us close to home. The family will be divided, three against two and two against three. The Gospel of Matthew takes his tension a bit further. We read that anyone who loves the father or the mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Those words are from Matthew chapter 10. This sounds pretty radical, but we also read from Luke chapter 10, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. And we say this in the Eucharist. Jesus also says, If you love me, obey my commandments. Abram set the example of loving God over family when he was prepared to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. But Abram, like Moses, walked very close to God. How do we know what God wants us to do in any particular situation? It is the story of someone seeking God's will by using the roulette method of opening the Bible and pointing at a verse. Well. The first verse he pointed to was Judas went out and hanged himself. Not so good. The second verse he pointed to was go and do likewise. Definitely not so good. Fortunately, he didn't obey the instruction he'd been given. But how can we tell if the word that we think we have received comes from God and not from ourselves? The first thing is we need to be walking close to God. We need a regular prayer life. Another thing is that God will not ask us to go against his written word. 
The Bible teaches us what is acceptable to God and what is not. What's more, the teaching comes from a number of different people, written in a number of different styles and over a long period of history. There is something there for everyone. But one problem with the Bible is that most of the stories speak in generalities and we need specifics which are relevant to our situation. For instance, do we take one job or another? Does this even matter to God? God will sometimes give guidance through dedicated prayer, but talking to someone we know is close to God and whose judgment we trust will certainly help. Let's look at a few examples from the Bible. We read in Judges chapter 6 that Gideon laid a fleece. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 1 that Hannah was deeply distressed when she prayed for the birth of Samuel. And we read in Daniel chapter 9 that when, he, when Daniel realized that the 70 years of captivity that had been prophesied by Jeremiah were up, he turned to the Lord with prayer and supplication, with fasting and confession. And an example of direct instruction was when Paul and Silas were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. So they went on to Troas, which was about a month's walk away. Here Paul had the vision of a Macedonian calling for help. And the story of this is in Acts chapter 16. An instruction that I have found intimidating is that we should pray without ceasing. <coughs> Firstly, how do we pray? Do we repeat some mantra like, Lord have mercy on me a sinner, over and over? Our lives are generally very busy, what with email and cell phones. Where do we find the time? I've recently been encouraged by Brother Andrew writing that every email, SMS or call we get gives us pause to pray for whatever the subject of the disturbance is. This I find easier to do, and it's something that each of us can do, which will keep God top of the mind, to use an expression from the advertising agency. So let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We pray the collect. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we've just prayed in the colic for inspiration to follow the example set by the saints in times past. Please bring us into a deeper and more meaningful relationship with you. You know that we cannot do this on our own. We need your lead. We know too that even when you prophesy something, you employ people, feet on the ground, to actually do the job. We see this is how Daniel responded to Jeremiah's prophecy at the end of the captivity of the Jews in Babylon. You still work in the same way today. Please bring us into that relationship with you that will enable you to turn to us when you want something done. That you will not have to go looking for someone else to do the task that you have planned for us. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
eternal God, whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and, f and that, free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, that by your great mercy defend us in all the perils of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all great grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you have given us and for all the blessings we have received at your hands. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words, but in the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Amen.